Hey there guys and welcome and yes we're back with career mode today, it's near here and before we start, big apologies. I know it's been like two weeks since I last made my um, since I made my last video, even is what I'm trying to say. Um, but that is basically because my new PC broke, basically. So the my computer that has all of my recording software, all of my editing software, just decided to like implode. Well, I didn't implode. That would have been extremely dangerous had it imploded, but thankfully it hasn't. Um, but for some strange reason, it's decided to work for the last two days, so I'm making a video now, and I might be able to make another grid video for today, but it will be like another week until I can make more videos, because I still have to send it off to the, the respective company over in Germany. So that's gonna, so it's gonna be gone for about, like, a week and a half, maybe two weeks again, but thankfully I can, hope, well, hopefully, I can get these two videos in to sort of break the void that is happening between uh, videos. And, uh, well, a bit of a black screen there, I must have forgotten to edit Teams, but still. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the reason why there haven't been videos for that long. I can only apologise, but unfortunately, with technology and that sort of shenanigans nowadays, unfortunately this happens a lot. Uh, it's a bit annoying, seeing as my computer's new, but anyway, I'm going to stop ranting. And the first game of this episode is Aston Villa vs Stoke. We're at home, we're, uh... Yeah, it, it, it kind of looks like the Britannia Stadium, stadium, but anyway, a great chance there, I think from Barry Bannon, I think it might have been, I'm not sure. But anyway, later on in the half, Matthew, Matthew Etherington puts in a ball for Ga Cameron Jerome, I was about to say Gameron Jerome, for Cameron Jerome. He puts it back into the box for Charlie Adam a few moments later, and it's a good save from Brad Guzan. Then Charles and Zogby with the shot later on in the half, and again, a good save from Asmir Begovic. Now on the half... An hour mark, Shaken Benge gets forward for no apparent reason. It is a good save again from Stoke's goalkeeper. It's being pinged around the box by Stoke for no apparent reason as well. And then it's cleared. Now, here, Andreas Weiman. Now, I'm not going to lie. I've, had, I've, had a, I've not had much luck this season. But that's some serious jam. That, I mean, that's jam verging on marmalade. I think Jeff Cameron, they're giving away the penalty. And in honesty, I have no idea how it's a penalty. But anyway, Barry Bannon steps up. After an apparent shirt pull maybe from the Stoke American defender. And he duly puts it away into the top left hand corner. No chance of that as near Begovic. Or it might be Thomas Sorensen in the Stoke goal. But I think it's Begovic since he's their uh, first choice keeper. But anyway, some various angles of that penalty there momentarily there. <laughs> That's the 39th minute. Then later on in the second half, Marko Arnautovic there with a good chance. The clearance is blocked by Dell, But unfortunately nothing comes of it. Fabian Delph again setting up some shenanigans, and now Mark Albrighton there, sorry, with a very strange chance, a deflection off a defender, it was actually originally a cross, cross even, get my words completely mixed up today, but, uh, and then some more shenanigans, that probably really should be a penalty actually, I was getting a lot of jam going my way, Vyman there though later on getting a great cut in, past Andy Wilkinson, and the shot really well saved actually, from <clears throat> Asmir Begovic, and then Christian Teo's follow up as well, Saved. That was some great goalkeeping from the Canadian, Bosnian, whatever he is. But anyway, Arnautovic there with the shot. And yeah. So I'm not going to lie. I have absolutely no idea what happened there. But that makes it 2-0 on, uh, on the 90th minute. And um, the save from Begovic with his feet. It bounces up in the air. He seems to lose track of the ball. But then makes the catch. And then gets pushed into the goal by an onrushing Marco Arnautovic. And that makes it 2-0. Even more jam. I didn't think it would be possible based on the previous levels of jam in that game. But anyway, Marko Arnautovic getting man of the match after that strange goal. I'm not even sure how he got to the goal. I'm not sure how he was, how people watched that game and thought, oh yeah, that was his goal. Because I don't, I, anyway, more scouting reports. Germany and Romania again. And Germany usually on previous career modes I had, I think I had a Swansea career mode. My whole youth academy was made out of German players. But for some reason... At the moment, the German youth players that I'm looking for, I'm scouting at the moment in Germany, are absolutely horrendous. Uh, I had a stumble upon this guy, Petre Nikolai, uh, looking pretty average. His potential is very good, but his uh, starting stat is like uh, late 50s, possibly early 60s, if I'm lucky. So I'm going to put him in the youth academy for now, but uh, if he doesn't really progress a huge amount over the next few months, then I will probably end up releasing him. But anyway, the next game now is up against Reading. And oh boy. Oh boy, was this a joyous game to behold. Right. So, basically, Reading at home. 
Well, I mean, you know, going into this, I was pretty confident. I've just beaten Stoke 2 now. I thought, you know what? You know what? I've just beaten a relatively hard team to play. So, I'm going into this thinking, yeah. You know what? Yeah. I'll have a piece of this. I'll have a piece of you, Reading, and I will take more than a piece of you, and I will get three points today. Um, but as you can see, it was starting pretty well. We had the first chance of the game. Marco Arnautovic was played through. He had a chance. It was saved by Federici, and there, the onrushing, uh, seemingly more attacking than defensive left-back, Chekambenge of France, was there to follow up with his pretty awesome celebration, actually, for a defender on the 11th minute, and that, boy, was that a good start. That was very good. Great play from Chaik and Benge to even get that far forward. Anyway, and Zogbia played in by Arnautovic. Cuts back inside, past Mariapa. Back for Vyman. Shot is blocked. Blocked even. Not block. Blocked. It bounces back for Zogbia, and his shot is again saved by Adam Federici later on. Andy Vyman gets a chance. It's blocked, and it comes for Arnautovic. And what a finish that is. That is one heck of a finish from my big Austrian striker, Marco Arnautovic. On the 33rd minute, I do believe that was. Uh, the first shot blocked from Andy Vyman, but it falls beautifully for Arnautovic. And what a shot that is. What a goal on the first time, sort of half volley. Then later on, in, the, in about five minutes later, actually, Andy Vyman goes past two players and blasts it right into the bottom corner on the 40th minute. And wow, this was a sick start to the game. I was 3-0 up, and I was living the life. I was enjoying myself as Aston Villa manager. Seeing my team going out and beating down Reading, although not maybe the most testing of opponents, it was still a fun time anyway. Again, Vyman breaking through, going past two players and unleashing a curling strike that was well saved by Adam Federici. Then Marco Arnautovic with the scoop turn. His shot again saved. A, a mighty fine save from <clears throat> the Australian Federici. But anyway, Unzogbia. That is Unzogbia for you. The Frenchman... On the 50-something minute, with a fantastic curling shot from outside the area. That, in, in itself, is a feat. A finesse shot going in from a good 30 yards out. Now, that is something to be proud of. And so it was 4-0. But then, a great ball from Pavel Pogrebniak put in Adam Lafondra. And so it begun. EA scripting just took hold. It was like... And, oh, oh, yeah, and then this. Oh, yeah, that's just, that's fantastic. I decided at this point to bring on Mark Albrighton. And, uh, well, that was, that was, that was what happened. I ended up getting an invisible player. So I was effectively down to 10. I don't know what the heck that glitch is. I don't know what the heck kind of challenge that was from Gary Gardner. And then Ron Vlad just decides to stand in front of Guzan. So he can't make the save from Lafondras. In all fairness, very good reaction strike. But there was so much ball involved in that goal. Vlar getting in the way of the goalkeeper. The retarded de uh, defensive tackle. And then suddenly, in the 86th minute, Alex Pierce makes it 4-3. And I'm like, no. I'm like, absolutely no. This is it. I do not want any of this. But anyway, it ended 4-3. Thank God. But that was some serious scripting going on, I have to say, from the A. That was really bullshitty, in all honesty. And I was not looking forward to that. Andy Byman getting man of the match. But anyway, after that intense EA scripting, it's time to say thank you guys for watching. I hope you haven't been too disappointed by the time it's taken to get this video out. But thank you for watching, guys. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And goodbye.